Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. And I just want to say one thing, Rod D, more deep gameplay, done. Let's jump across, have a look at the cards, talk about why they're here and what they shall be doing. I just want to add, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend you consider it. We are posting videos quite regularly, almost on the daily. We try and keep up to date with that. And I think you might find something here that's useful. So I'll catch you guys soon. Let's jump over. Let's look at the deck, talk about the cards, why they're here and what they shall be doing. Thanks Rod D for the comment. Just want to encourage you guys as well. If you're interested, leave your comments. Uh, if you have any questions or you're interested in seeing something, I am very open to ideas and you wouldn't believe how much I go through the comments and read every single one of them. I try and respond to as many as I can. I'm sorry if I miss out. And if you do have left a comment and I've responded saying I will do something like that, It'll take a little bit of time, so just give me a bit and maybe up to a week, who knows, maybe longer, but I will inevitably get there, I promise you that. Unless anything comes up, I'll be sure to like, you know, message you back. And maybe like if it's a deck you want to see, maybe I'm not as comfortable sharing it, I will leave a link to at least something to get you by. And without further ado guys, uh, enough of the chit chat, let's talk about the deck. So for any player that doesn't understand Nautilus and what happens is, he's a mechanic that revolves heavily around deep. So when you have X amount of cards left in your deck, that would be X being 15, you get the deep mechanic opened up, which results in a whole bunch of different things. The most common stuff you're gonna see is a deep deck running sea monsters who all get kind of buffed up from the effect. And then Nautilus itself gets deep and that's how he levels up. And then you'll see Monster Allies cost four less and this allows you to pretty much be a control deck that flows into a late game and just annihilates your opponent with huge creatures from the depths. Uh, also, if the games do go late enough, Nautilus's Riptide spell card, which you can also run in the list, I've decided to cut it, uh, allows you to stun enemies and shuffle them into the enemy deck, which is really great because it also hits champions as well. Very relevant, there's not enough cards in the game, think you're right that do in fact uh, have the ability to contact champions so that's really good so basically you'll be able to close out the game and just get this inevitable cycle of cards so it's just really 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 powerful it does kind of struggle in the early game against some decks so you can get run over but our early game comprises of three dread druggers and a lot of these cards you will notice for newer players that a lot of them do revolve around tossing uh we don't really care about tossing cards too much we just want to go deep as soon as we can that's where deep is fitting into the meta right now and that's how you're going to blow out your games three dread druggers this is a two, uh, one mana two one with three toss very powerful helps a lot in the early game two jettison at the moment this is susceptible to change but i think two just to kind of guarantee hitting a deep earlier i'm actually running three thorny toads at the moment there's a few aggro decks running around at the moment i think swims popularizing a shadow isles Burn deck, so I, I'm gonna stick with three Thorny Toads at the moment. Throughout some of these games I had here, I did change the list to finalize about here. Uh, so you will see maybe a missed call in one of the games that's been taken out at the moment for cards like Thorny Toad. And I've actually gone back to the top end, uh, running uh, two Avengers at the moment. It's gonna help out against Tepo Sejuani and mid range decks at the moment. Ruination is too slow, okay? Ruination is too slow and it might affect your board a bit more. Uh, Vile Feast is pretty much at the moment finding its place as setting up chump blockers and buying time. So Vile Feast is still just a very stable Shadow Wilds card. I thought when the meta slowed down, this card may have been reduced, but it's not entirely the case. Okay, so Vile Feast, three of, Dead Blue Wanderer, three of. This card's insane. One of the most powerhouse cards for toss in general. Three mana, three, two, life still helps out a lot for the control deck in early game. Three attacks relevant for blocking into fearsome units as well. Joel Hunters is a three of to help out against a mid range. When I'm summoned, create a random sea monster in hand too, so that's really cool. So this this, this card just fits. It makes a lot of sense at the moment and in a mid range heavy meta. Cards like this help out a lot because we haven't exactly got the best removal. For those kind of threats. Hence now we're running double ruin, uh, double vengeance. Maokai as a two of. This could be a three of. I think two of is is fine. You get one to play for tempo and one to guarantee the late game. So Maokai, it's always good if you have an opportunity to consider uh, for more intermediate to advanced players. Look for opportunities where you can tempo out Maokai. It's going to boost your win rate dramatically. And if you can even get one sapling off, that's enough. Any more than that, you're 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 golden. You're insane. Leveling this up pretty much destroys your opponent's deck, leaving non-champion cards. I won't go into too much detail about Maokai, because it's not the full focus here, but fits into the deck really nice. I think Maokai and Nautilus are generally made for each other. Salvage, I'm in my list I'm running two of, some will have a three of. It's up to you how you want to play. If you're really focused on going deep, Salvage is a great card for doing that, but it could also become a little bit clunky. You never want to see multiples of it. In some matchups you may, but in general, I think two is a good number right now, and I can recommend that you use two. 
Abyssal Eye, this is going to be a two of as well. It's not the, it's not really the strongest, but it does have matchups where it's really relevant. Um, it's hard to play a five mana three three with elusive in general, and uh, most of the time you do want to look for that deep to make this card a lot more powerful. But there'll be rare case scenarios where you feel like you have to play it on the offense or the defensive. So Abyssal Eye, it's elusive and most of the time it's most powerful when you go deep. So keep your eyes out for that. But don't be scared to play it. Grasp, we're going to have two of. I think as time goes on, this may change. But for now, I'm going to keep it pretty straightforward. We're going to run two Grasp with the Undying. This could very much be a one of. This could very much be a three of. But... Um, it's not finding a really good home right now and there's lots of um it could be it could be punished a lot like at the moment uh sejuani decks are running like fury of north uh the aggressive decks are running like blood transfusion and stuff it's 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 a very abusable card from your opponent and doesn't find as much value as it used to that's for sure it's gonna help you against aggro though don't get me wrong even if they have blood transfusion and stuff it's gonna help you uh, Thresh, one of for the odd chance that you get to level him up or just use him for challenging. He can sometimes rip out your uh, Thresh from, uh, sorry, Maokai or Nautilus from the deck, which is pretty insane, but it's not always going to happen. But there's rare case scenarios where you just play Thresh for tempo on turn five. Uh, you can sometimes challenge your units and really threaten them to play differently around it. So he's just a powerhouse unit and fits into this deck very well. I could recommend running, uh, running one of this. If you don't have Thresh, you could easily change this for a Maokai, okay? Withering Whale, three of. Uh, this is still probably the most powerhouse Shadow Isles card. It does help against aggro tremendously and for setting up weird trades and buying time. I think Withering Whale is finding a lot more value than Grasp. Hence, this is going to be a three of. It's a very, very good card. Trusty, this is going to be a two of. A bit slower, a bit more greedy in the mirror matchup. Cards like this will help out a lot. And being able to kind of guarantee drawing into one of them could be enough to win games sometimes. You can set up this... It's pretty easy once you've hit turn 7, 8, 9 to connect one big damage source and then atrocity them with Nautilus if they're not careful with how they use their mana. This deck will struggle into Will of Ionia though, so be careful on those matchups. They're going to be a hard time. Uh, Vengeance, we were talking about this earlier. I did miss Devour Depths. We'll go back in a sec. But yeah, we have Vengeance for the mid-range matchup. Devour Depths is a three of. This is probably powerhouse removal as the game goes on. I'm pretty heavy on the removal side of things since I'm running two Vengeance. But Devour Depths doesn't always get the job done, especially um, even once you've gone deep. It's not always going to get the job done and it's very hard to play it early. It does help by time and like it's it's pretty... This is a, probably the most skill testing card in the deck. Timing of use of this where it's like if it doesn't work is the 4-4 body worth it it's a lot of questions to ask for that one but you have to ask yourself is it worth playing devour depths right now in case it doesn't work that's a really important question to ask yourself because that's going to happen quite often terror of tides big finisher if this ever gets down uncontested you'll end the game on this so when you attack give enemies minus two this round all sea monster allies have fearsome this is a big finisher it sometimes doesn't get to Terror Tides, but if it ever does, it's a blowout. That's the deck, guys. Enjoy the games here. I hope I've passed on enough information, Rod D. Hope you can enjoy the gameplay. And I will see you soon. Oh, This could be tough. And do I ever keep... No. I think your story control could actually have a good shot against us. Oh, we have a one drop. How do you change the font color? Um, Dean Arena posted a video on it actually. I'll get that link for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking about making a video, but Dean Arena has gone and made one, which is really handy. Let me get that link. It's in the Discord. It's in media. Think you're fast? Cute. So if you want to change the font of your titles, you can quickly watch this video. Oops. Soft man. 
Hello, soft man. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for the raid, buddy. Welcome. Soft man. Soft man. How's it going? Soft man, I was having breakfast and did not see the sub. There you go. Yeah, dude, thanks for the raid. Uh, welcome, everyone that may have been tuning in to Soft man's stream. Asleep or awake, I enjoy your time here. You know, you know what? You know what outplays me here? Katarina. Katarina. Yeah, that works as well, I guess. So this is a pretty free swing now. Oh. No. No, do you have a play for this? No. Come on, buddy. Come on, bruh. I mean, that achieved like essentially the same goal for me. I wanted to clear the blade twirler. We cleared the blade twirler. Never take that block, guys. Especially when the Shadow Wilds has two mana. Never take that risk. Hello. Yep, I'm gonna play you. It's a pretty free Maokai. I'll take a block here. By the way, if anybody hasn't checked out Softman, please go check him out. Hello, Ozzyman. Playing the Rune Terror. High quality content. Again, there's always the possible Katarina to outplay this. We are back on our feed, my cats. Send pics, please. Discord, cats. Pretty sure I just... Pretty sure I just do this. I wonder if I needed that challenger to deal with the Yasuo. It's not uncommon for him to have an answer though, so... I won't take my risks. Yeah, I'm not going to block this. I guess I'll play the four. Yeah. Stun the weakest enemy. Uh oh. We need to go deep. We got to go deep, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, this is a scary turn. With no answers to the Yasuo, part of me feels like I have to play Nautilus and hope for the best. Because if I go wide, I lose to a bunch of different cards. <laughs> dude, with a deep deck, can't get it up, dude. I have learned patience. Look. What if I play Abyssal Eye? What if I just d double dead Blue Mondra? And just hope that he hasn't got the wide answer. Oh boy. Guess this is the play. I wonder if drawing cards is kind of important here. All right, I'm gonna grab some grub. Good luck with the games. We'll check back in a bit. My man, thank you. Thank you very much. So now I've got a 7-7. Seven, seven.
Here's a funny question. Do I ever play Maokai's sap magic? Back. What's up, Icanus? If you didn't hear me, I said send pics to the cats, please. That would be super cool. Discord. General chat. Send cat pics now. Or, not right now, but maybe one day. Tired of waiting. Okay, Minotaur Reckoner. Yeah? I think we're okay with that. Hasegi! Okay. I actually think I'm gonna play Sap Magic. Uh oh. Yeah, I could toss or play Sap Magic. I feel like. I guess the Sap Magic essentially achieves the same goal, but it's better use of my cards. Now it's going to be the game of sustaining. It's stray cats that go to a house. Our house, we adopted them. That's really nice. That's really cute. Comeback story for the cats, dude. Oh, this summons first, which means that's useful. Except for now, Maokai is going to get slapped for two. It's okay. I follow only one path, my own. Okay, let's see if we can survive the next four turns. Uh, I mean, I, I get to play now. I get to have some fun now. Who's the higher threat here? Who's the highest threat here? I think I've got to get one of the Minotaur Reckoners off the field. Yo, Cheesy Sauce. How's it going, buddy? Thanks for popping in nice and late. The threats are the Minotaur Reckoners. If I can get at least one off the field, it makes my life a little bit easier. Uh, Nautilus is pretty susceptible to like Will of Ionia, although it would be it will it would be great to get one onto the field guaranteed, but it's never likely. I got options here. I think this is the turn to play Nautilus. I'm curious about something, and that is if I have this card, Riptide, and he would essentially use a Will of Ionia here. Would my Riptide get first priority? And what happens if he fizzles this? This is scary. I don't know if I could play Riptide here, although it's a really good winner. The game winner. What happens if I play Riptide here? And he has Deny. Only one way to find out. And that is to test it for science. Dr. Stone once said, let's do it for science. Yeah, okay. So I essentially just lose a Nautilus. He pretty much killed a Nautilus with that. I still have a Grasp though. And this is a pretty free swing if I'm not mistaken. Oh. We're nearly there. Just don't have Katarina.
I guess I just go for it, right? Right? How many answers could you possibly have? Are you a man with a lot of answers? Shit, he's a man with lots of answers. Well, if we survive this turn, do we not just win? If I'm not mistaken, I think we win. No flips Katarina to rally against me. He's on to his last draw. I could always play, I think Joel Hunters is slightly better here for the chance he has no stun card. And for the chance I found something a bit cheaper to play. GG. Interesting. Have you considered other games to play? The chains, they never stop. I'm happy to take this swing if he takes it. If it doesn't swing, it means he has like a combo with it. Yeah, I'll take this. I'll take this trade. You know what's weird? On this toss, I can only see two cards. On this one, it's three. If you hit a champion, does that stop your toss? I'm at home Destiny as there was supposed to be some kind of event for the end of season. I played a little bit of Destiny once. I played Destiny when it first came out. I'm the first Destiny, and then I played a little bit of the most recent one. Why can't I see this card I tossed? That's aggressive. Playing Minecraft Dungeons now while watching. I saw that you can get that for like a for free if you had like the uh Xbox Game Pass. Some of my friends played it for a little bit. I've got plenty of healing in the deck. I guess I just let this attack go through. Uh, Maokai and Hecarim. So what is it cutting to run Maokai? And what happens if I play this? I don't think a tremendous amount happens if I play that. Oh, he plays his one. And he gets he gets prior on the attack too, which is spooky. All right, just waiting on some delivery now. Softman 2020. Oh, I'm on Switch. Where I'll hope they'll port law. <laughs> Partner was keen on takeout. Dude, that is a nuts draw. 
I cannot comprehend the power of my opponent right now. But what I can do is play Thresh. Will Will of Ionia in this already such a greedy list. He chooses that. This is so weird. Who's the higher who's the higher threat here? Is it Neverglade or Maokai? Actually, Maokai is no threat to me. Is it? Yes, it is. It's a little bit of a threat. Because I need my Nautiluses. I have one in hand. Boy, this is weird. Because I could play Vengeance this turn. Got nine mana. Pretty sure Maokai is the bigger threat here. Go and play something, you know you want to. Play something. I'm actually gonna withering before the attack. I need to kill this Maokai. 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 I can sustain through the Neverglade. Pokemon. A mana. Danger paid. We deep. Cast the gems. Lore on switch would be good. Would mean I don't need to use my phone in bed and can I have a slightly bigger screen. I wouldn't mind playing Pokemon again. That's for sure. I played uh, Ruby, Alpha Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire quite heavily. I got really into like the breeding and the competitive side of Pokemon. I used to also play Pokemon TCG for a bit. So that was cool. I don't have a lot of le legendary Pokemon for my living decks why I want the second one more. Yeah, didn't they do something in Sword and Shield to like the uh, national decks in terms of the you breed shinies all the time? I found a, I had a shiny Sword Blue. That was cool. Do you protect this? I guess not. Oh, it's another one. I didn't get into breeding that much. That's why I won't be getting the expansions. Wait, there's something I'm missing. Sword and Shield, I'm completely um behind on. Like, my knowledge of Sword and Shield is pretty limited. Like, I know, I even know that they like had announced like some other expansion or something, but I don't even know what that looks like. Uh oh. Luna Del Rey, redeemed the poster check, and we're gonna hydrate, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks, Luna.
So what does an expansion look like in a Pokemon game? Because that's like actual alien talk to me. Nothing is a firm rail here. I need to get this Norlis onto the field so I can actually start doing something, right? A small new region with new Pokemon and Galadian versions of Pokemon too. Oh, I think I saw uh, Rapidash. Did Rapidash have a Galadian version? Is that what we might be talking about? Uh oh. Wait, what could the possible reason for this be? Why would you ever do this? Why would you ever do that? Because you have another... Oh. <laughs> I see now. <laughs> uh, big, big brain plays. Can I actually get a Norlis to stick for once? There will be more Pokemon with a Galarian versions too. Sick. Do I play my biggest dude or do I play Abyssal Eye and Float Mana? Floating Mana means I have access to Vengeance and Atrocity next turn. So... Feels correct to me. Galarian. That's cool, man. If I ever get a Switch one day, I will definitely be playing Pokemon without a doubt. I'm always going to swing my asshole here, yeah? Always. I mean... That's good for us, I think. Suddenly, I've got to play this. He's about to overflow me with cards next turn. He never, he never, he always open attacks here. Is there a way I can survive this turn? Surely there is. It's not too unrealistic to try and survive. Like, what if I just do that? Does that feel okay? Do I ever, like, consider just using a vengeance against the Hecarim? No, this is just gotta be safe. This is fine. We can just react with our spells here and kill him next turn, most likely. We, because we got to deal with the Netherglade Collectors, it made this match a whole lot easier. Let me know so we can play. It may be a while, man. I'm, I can't really afford to buy a Switch. There was once upon a time when I was working and stuff that I could definitely had, I was thinking about getting a Switch. I even spoke with my wife about it that we consider doing it for like Christmas or something. But then I realized like I probably wouldn't play it enough. So I kind of like stayed away, straight away from the idea. I guess, unless he's running Ruination. I can probably develop a little bit here. So I can... This might look weird, but I'm just going to do this in case of Ruination. Man, in a, in a deck like this, would you be running Ruination? Yeah, I'm just going to swing, swing in. There's no way you could possibly have answers here. Like double, triple Will of Ionia. GG. The 
The waters cannot be sated. That was a good game.